Hi, Susan, and welcome to the End of Life Journey and Beyond, The Sands of Time. My name is Lisa Strauss Lawrence, and I'm a bereavement specialist. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Susan Caparso, End of Life Doula and Legacy Specialist. It's so nice to be here, Valentine's Week, right? I searched this morning for a piece of red clothing, Lisa. <laughs> See? Look at you. You wore enough <laughs> red for the both of us. I did not have one piece of red. Wow. I love red. I grew up in red. Red and black are my colors growing up. You know, I'm very muted in blacks and whites and beiges and khakis. And I, I was never very colorful, but not to have one thing in red. That was that surprised me. <laughs> uh -huh. So glad. I'm happy you're wearing red for love. Yes. And today we wanted to to talk a little bit about, I mean, we talked about the first and first holidays and we talked about that in several videos, but we're concentrating on love for the week, right? A little bit about love because it's all about love and roses and hearts and petals. And it's not always something that we want to think about uh, while we're suffering and going through a loss. Yes, we're thinking of the love, but but the fear is there um, about losing a per loved one in your life. But then after, you feel like there is no love. And we're here to tell you today that there is love. There's still a love, right? And I'm going to go one step further. And I'm going to oh, say good. it's not only about loving others, but it's also about loving ourselves and taking mm -hmm. good care of ourselves. Yeah. And this is going to be very important as we speak about caring for the people who may be at the end of life or the people who we've lost and then trying to figure out how we're going to live our life without that person. So there's a number of things that love encompasses. And I think we need to think more um, globally than just, you know, it's a Valentine's Day thing and we would have gotten flowers or we would have gotten, you know, chocolate or whatever. It's really about the concept of loving ourselves and loving the people around us and showing that to ourselves and others. Right. And so. even, and there's nothing wrong with taking the focus off of you for a little bit, you know? So, so let's first start out with the holiday itself, right? Yeah. Most of us don't, you know, we think Valentine's Day and there's no need to celebrate it. I, I'm, a, I'm a different entity. I worked in the flower business for many years of my life and I didn't have Valentine's Day days. We, did, we never celebrated, you know, I was home by midnight. Wow. Um, so we never really got to celebrate a Valentine's Day, but, you know, for most, for a lot of people, they do. They have, it was a big deal to celebrate Valentine's Day. So maybe to try and take the focus a little bit off that, like you're saying, and, and think of love and what that encompasses and think of the people in your life. All right. For, for example, you know, if say you're a grandparent, okay, not, not, not everybody hearing this is going to be a grandparent, but say you're a grandparent, um, Maybe for the first time ever, you can have a Valentine's Day with your grandchildren and make it all about the hearts and the love and invite them over. It's not only giving their parents a chance to, to get out on their own, but you your focus could be on them and on something a little different than the Valentine's Days that you're used to sharing yes. with the person yes. you love, right? Yes, yes. And that's the same thing that we talked about a while ago when we talked about the holidays. And we said you can turn the holiday into something else that's a new thing. And so maybe it's something that you do with your girlfriends that you love and that you feel really close to. And you go out right. for a Valentine's dinner or something together. I mean, love is not just romantic love. There's so many different types of love. You know, the love that we have for our children, the love that we have for friends, the love that, you know, I mean, there's so many different ways of expressing love so you know to be caught up in just what was is really right. depriving you of the opportunity to branch out and to accept love in other ways and you have an opportunity now to extend a, an olive branch where you never really did before because maybe you were focused on your your spouse or your boyfriend or girlfriend or right. you right. know and maybe you didn't have that. Maybe now, okay, you can make a special lunch with, you know, yeah. a parent or one of your children or a niece or nephew. 
Yes. You know, let's have a, a Valentine's celebration. But it's not going to happen if you don't take the first step. And I know that's very hard at the beginning, right? Yes. We talk about yes. this all the time. If it means staying home and watching a movie, do that. That's okay. But there are other ways to show love to yourself and to other people right. besides just the typical Valentine's Day that you always used to, to spend. Right, right. And even if it's not a present that you give yourself, you know, yeah. it's a spa day for yourself or it's a manicure for yourself, or it's something that is a self, you know, care kind of thing that right. says, Because hey, if we don't have know, self-love, we don't have anything. That's so right. how about going and getting the manicure or the haircut or what have you, or massage. But how about stopping at the grocery store or getting takeout on the way home? Your favorite thing. Yeah. You know, I love, I've had a thing this week with pizza and anchovies, you know? So at, I'm making them actually, I'm trying the cauliflower crust and different things to get it, make it a little healthier meal, but I'm really enjoying it because I love that. And nobody else does. Nice. So I'm trying to bring in some different things you know, over the course of the week. Yeah, I think it's really hard for people to focus on themselves, especially women. We're so busy, always taking care of everybody else and always making everybody else feel, you know, loved and Mm -hmm. everything else. But we need to figure out our own situations. Um, And if we are caregivers, that is really important. And let me just go to a general thing about caregiving. That is exhausting. It is um, very difficult giving of yourself totally all the time to people who are very sick. I know it for 15 months and I know what it did for me and how difficult it was. And I also knew that if I didn't start taking care of myself, I could never have given anything to my husband who was dying and we knew it. Um, But I couldn't have been able to keep moving every day and keep, you know, showing him the best that I could give him um, since he was going through his own issues. So loving yourself, especially during that time and taking care and finding your needs. Even I joined a support group for people who, uh, whose family members and friends were going through cancer. It was called Cancer Care. And just being with a group of people who understood sometimes my anger or my frustration or, you know, my hopelessness, that was really important. I believe that self-love that I took the time. I said, I deserve this. I need this. I want this. And, you know, and I, and I went, I went once a week and for a year, it really sustained me, you know, it, it helped yeah. me get through. So again, that's a form of self-love because yeah. it is very difficult to take care of somebody. And what about showing the people, you know, in your life, how much you love and appreciate them? Okay. So it may not be getting together and having a lunch or going out to dinner or having a private celebration like that. It might be just to go to the grocery store or the card store and to pick up a half dozen cards for maybe friends and family that you love and have appreciated during this time. Because, you know, you now, along with Lisa and I, know how short life is, right? And not everybody in the world does, and they don't realize that and understand it. But because you know, let's appreciate the people that are caring in our lives and the ones that we are grateful for and the ones we appreciate. The store is filled with Valentine's Day cards. It doesn't have to be a Valentine's Day card. It could be just that um, I love you, you, appreciate you. you. Right. Right. And I'm thinking of you and I'm grateful you're in my life, especially during this past year. And that is a little project in itself. And it's little, but it's big. It's it big um, for something that you are go- going to accomplish this week. It's big for the person who receives it. Okay. It's a, it's a profound little exercise. It's big in that you have to get in the car and go to the store and stand in front of the cards and choose these particular cards for the people in your life. And then go to the post office and put the stamps on them and fill them out. So it's a project, but it's a really nice project it that is. you could do during this time, right? Yeah. People don't get love cards for other much. people. People don't get cards that much. And it's wonderful to get a card. You know, when you get a birthday card in the mail, it's like, wow, you know, it's not an e-card and it's not Facebook. And here it is a real card. That's a really nice idea. Really nice. My Aunt Patty um, has been sending me cards since I can remember. 
as a 10 year old, <laughs> probably yeah. younger. And she still does today, you know, and that's her thing. And it's exciting to see her handwriting on the envelope in the mailbox and get a card from her, you know, so it's people do enjoy it and, and love that. And you could do that with the people in your life as well. Yeah, I love that idea. Um, yeah. So other things for people um, who are either caring for people um, and the loss is a whole nother story, which will which will go to soon. But um, other things that I, I think part of it is you have to get in touch with what you enjoy and what would make you happy. It's hard to focus on yourself when you're so busy focusing on someone else or yeah. on others. Um, but I think you have to start getting in touch with what gives you some joy, you know? Yeah, and that's that can be hard for, for some people, especially when you're a caregiver. Yeah. And, you know, this is the, the, the area that we're talking about right now at this moment, the yeah. caregiver, right? Yes. So yes. it's, you know, burnout it, is easy. It burnout is easy. Is easy. You're tired. And even when you have some respite care and somebody can come in, I'm a hospice volunteer and I, I can give two hours by law to go in and sit with a hospice a patient and just to see the daughter or the family member, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do with myself. I was there yesterday and and she, the beautiful daughter does so much and works a full-time job and takes care yeah. of her mom. But she said, maybe I'll go get a, a manicure. Nice. You know, and she brought her daughter with her. And just the time that they were able to spend together in getting that manicure, it was a hard for her because she's not used to leaving the house, yes. you know, but it was a little reprieve and it made her feel good. And she had her nails done. So even little things. Asking like for time off. That's a great suggestion. Asking for some time for yourself, just even for a couple of hours, a relief. Um, whoever, you know, maybe not bad about that. We don't want to put that burden on somebody else. We feel guilty about it and bad yes. about it, but yes. that's in our mind. Yes, it is. That's only in our minds that we think that way because other people do want to do want to help. They do. And, and many times I've you heard a people relief. say, I have heard people say, I don't know what to do to help them. They don't ask me for anything. Well, it's hard to ask, but you know, they don't know what to do to help. And this is this right. makes them feel good too that they're helping you that they can help and now they, they know what something. to do and they can right. sit and read a book or sit and just be you know yes. and that's really important and that, that's why we wanted to bring that the caregiver point up because showing yourself love is definitely not a priority that's true and this month is about love right it is it is Day, so that's so really we'll talk about loss because it's really hard you know, you're busy feeling guilty that you're the one left and you're busy angry because that person left you. And I mean, you have a million emotions, but, you know, part of it is trying to move on in some way, in some small ways to find yourself again and you create a new self. Um, so small steps in doing something that you love, you know, whether it's taking a bath, or whether it's reading a book, or whether it's going for a walk, just taking something time for yourself, and being good to yourself, you know, showing that love for yourself. You know, we rarely, um, Lisa and I, we, we rarely talk about um, spirituality and religion, because our channel's meant for, you know, anybody, any beliefs. It is. Um, but I've been I've been taking a course in miracles. I do read the Bible. And the more I'm learning and the more people that I listen to, the bottom line is it's it's just all about love. You know, we're here for a short time on this earth. We each have about a hundred years if we're lucky. If you're lucky. Right? Yes. Right. And a lot of us don't. My husband left at 52. Who and knows? My husband left at 56. They thought they'd be here for a hundred years. Absolutely. <laughs> So we get surprises along the way like that. But to know that you are here for a short amount of time, to try and incorporate more love into our lives, we don't think of that when we're, you know, when we're young and we just start dating. And well, it's all about the love then too, but love in a different way. 
you know, I think really um, the real essence of love comes a little later on as we grow and we learn and realize that these are the important things of, yeah. in life. Yeah. You know, not the house we're living in, mm -hmm. not how many mm -hmm. vacations a year or yep. the brand of car that you drive around that's in, right right the most important thing really is the love that you can have in your life share in your life with your friends your children your girlfriends your yes. relatives yes and that's that's a hard thing for us to accomplish and feel really enlightened and at peace about that love because not everybody has those circles you have a Brady Bunch family living down the road <laughs> that really you're jealous when you're looking at all the Facebook posts and everything that they're doing four nights a week, right? And then you have other people who really don't have big circles and have smaller families. So you really need to adjust for where you are in your life and accept that and love it for the way it is. I think you know? the part of it is that there's no comparisons. You don't really know what's happening in anybody's household. You don't know happiness. Right. You don't know what they're they're really doing or feeling or whatever. You're so right. So I think that the only thing that you can do is find what you need to find the happiness and the love that you deserve. And again, loving yourself is the most important thing. You can't love, be loved or anything else until you do love yourself who you are, what you are, everything about you and taking and what you care love. of yourself. And what you love. Now, I brought this up in a, in a previous video, but I'm going to say it again because it's, it's really about loving yourself. Sit with a pad and pen, make a list of the things that you love. And that's hard to do. You may need to leave that pad out on the coffee table for a couple of weeks before you can get a decent sized list in front of you. But it's so worthwhile because when you're having dark times or you're feeling negative and, you know, our minds play tricks on us, our minds, definitely, I have felt the negativity and the darkness when you go through loss, you can refer back to the things that you do love and maybe try and incorporate a couple of them into your life somehow. You know, it's easy to think about the things you love when you're feeling good. It's very difficult when you're not feeling well and, and it's a downtime for you. But it's an important exercise, I think, because I've gone back and referred to it. Just the smell of a certain flower. That's something I love. And that went on my list. You know, clean sheets. You know, getting in the car on Saturday morning and saying, I'm going for a drive and I'm not coming back till dinner time. Mm -hmm. That's big. That's something that you love to do. Take an adventure. That's something that's on my list. Yes. Okay. So when you list these things and have a list of 20 or 30 different things that you love, wow, it makes you feel good to look back and refer to it and yes. to know I can do some of these things and, and get you out of your own mindset and being in your, your four walls, right? That's a great suggestion a great suggestion and i'm going to go to also the same exercise that we did a while ago with the holidays and that is write down the things you loved growing up write down the things you loved you know with the person who perhaps is no longer there and then write down the things now you think about yourself and figure out the newness of all that how can i incorporate what i loved as a child what i loved you know with the other person and all and where i am now in my life and you know you'd be surprised at the things that come up that you forgot about. Oh yeah, I really did love baking apple pies or, you know, a bunch of things. Cooking, I'm by the way, is very that. nurturing, by the way. And I'm taking that, I'm taking that point and bringing it back to Valentine's Day, right? So say that this is a hard time for you because you did do something special all the time or you went to a certain place or no, there was a homemade dinner with candlelight and ambiance and little little fairy lights hanging around the room. Whatever it may have been, if that was your go-to thing, try not to suffer in the misery of I'll never have that again. Yes. Take that experience and own it and say, wow, I did get to spend so many years doing this with the fairy lights. How can I love doing that? Maybe I can do that for myself. Maybe I can invite somebody else into doing that, having that experience with me. Ways to change it up, just like you're talking about. Or maybe newness. 
I mean, it becomes a memory and, right. and it might stay there as a memory. And then you're making new memories of what That's else right. it might represent for you. And you've been very good at doing that all the way. In a lot of videos, we've talked about how you took a certain time or event or holiday or anything and turned it into something else. But then you've made it a tradition. I so you managed to hang on to the new now in the new chapter. Yes. And it's very helpful because it brings out the love and the positivity in you. You know, outlook is really important. It's hard to be positive when you're feeling negative, but I've always, you know, look, we're all made up of who we are, you know, our inner being, but I think we can learn other traits as we go through our challenges and challenges, you know, either make us really strong or, you know, really defy, you know, what we're going to do and how we're going to handle things. And I do think that we have to concentrate on thinking more positively about how these things do change and they open up the doors, you know, gosh, we would have loved to have our husbands here. There's no question about that. My father, my mother, my biological mother, I mean, on and on and on, but you know, we're here now. And number one, I'm so grateful that they were in my life, even if it was a short time, whatever it was in my life. But I feel like the responsibility of their love to me was to make sure that I continued my life. I have always felt that way. And, you know, my husband said it, I was lucky that way, but I always feel that as we've pointed out, life is short. And what are we gonna do with our lives? We're gonna mourn mm -hmm. our whole lives. We're gonna be sad our whole lives. That's not, first of all, it's not fair to us, but it's also not fair to the people who loved us. That is not, I know it. They loved us and that's not what they would want us to do. Easy said than done. And I'm not saying this is easy, but I'm saying to you that the philosophy of living has to be that life goes on and that we deserve to have a good life and love ourselves as we love the people who were around us, you know, and they loved us too. So, you know, and it's all right to be sad sometimes. It's all right to be angry sometimes. It's all right to say why, you know, and, and that's normal and that's fine. But I think in the overall, we need to feel like we have and deserve a life for ourselves. And that to me is loving ourselves the best way possible. We deserve to be happy. We deserve our life. And all the memories, I say it all the time, memories never die. I talk about him. I talk about my parents. They're still in me. They're still part of me. Um, and, you know, it, it's when you stop talking about people that they're gone. But they're never gone for me. You know? How lucky are we How to still be a part of the world? That's right? right. So, and, and I'm reading lately a lot about challenges. And every single one of us we have to go through challenges life it's right. not meant to be a perfect world here That's we right. wouldn't become better better people if we had not experienced certain things in our life some are a little harder than others some are tragedies Yes. You know, um, the, loss, the loss of a child, yes. I see, it's that's hard for me to grasp. At least, you know, if you're with somebody for 30 years or it's your parent, I mean, this is the circle of life. But then the loss of a child, how that's a tragedy. That's a trauma. That is a tragedy. Much more challenging than something you and I have yeah. experienced. Yes, yes, yes. There are support groups. There yes, are there are. Compassionate that go friends. Through those same challenges, are for, right? Are, are for compassionate friends or for people who have lost their children. And there's also books. Um, I uh, there's also a very good friend who um, runs, um, directs COPE, COPE here okay. on Long Island. So okay. look up COPE because they offer many now virtual uh, meetings online where they have speakers and they have activities through the years that the families can get together and and we're not getting into that but yes but there are um there there are resources available yeah and feeling by alone way, is really a huge challenge because by you the way, i want to mention lisa though i'm sorry to interrupt you no go ahead but if somebody has um questions 
about any resources or questions about anything that we've talked about in any of our videos, please give one of us yes. a call or yes. email us and reach yes. out because we can help direct you or guide you or support you in the right way. Yeah. So yeah, no, I'm glad you just said wanted that. to throw that out there. No, no, you're right. And there are resources, um, you know, all around. And of course, things are are online a lot now, too. And there's a lot of support books as well. Um, oh, so yeah. people feeling alone, that's the hardest thing. You feel like nobody else understands and you're in this alone. And that's not true. There are a lot of people who have gone through similar situations and all. So that's very important. So it's all about yeah. love. It's all about loving ourselves and loving those around us and uh, making sure that we nurture ourselves because we, we deserve it. So happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, Lisa. Thank you. So nice to see you this week. And again, thank you for wearing the red. Sure. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about your support groups and your uh, support books. Well, as an end-of-life doula, I service people on Long Island, of course, um, but I can do that virtually as well. I do consulting online. I do um, the story of your life. So that's a real nice project that I've been working on for people to leave their memories. And you don't have to be at end of life to do that. I work with healthy and vibrant people as well. And on EastEnd.Academy, we have several courses regarding end of life to give you some more uh, tips and good information on there. So, um, Lisa? We also have a workshop. I want to mention that. What does a dying person want? Really heavy workshop dealing with sensitive topics, but so important. And we cover that yeah. in the same thing in that um, website. So I'm a bereavement specialist. I think I understand death and dying very well. Um, and it's part of life. And so I also do one-to-ones and I can do them online or on Long Island. I could do them in person. Um, and I also have two support books, uh, both about pancreatic cancer. They support the Lusgarten Foundation. And uh, one is really about moving on with your life. So it chronicles how you've moved on after the loss of, of someone in your life. And it chronicles uh, 12 families. So, you know, we both have resources and we're both available to help out. And we both understand. We've been there. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. so thank you, Lisa, for this thank week. You. I hope this has been informative and some valuable education. And, and that's all we're here for. So if you like this video, please like and share our page and leave a comment. And we'll be please. happy to get back. We to welcome that. that and subscribe to please. Yeah, yeah. And we'll all see right. you next week. Next week. Take care. Bye. Bye, Lisa. <laughs>